I think that's a hard thing for everybody to do if we go back to this idea of like the unlimited choices is we're not looking at ourselves. We just continue looking at other the next person. Okay, right. what's the next person? What's the next person? You know, swipe, swipe this way, swipe this way. It's so much harder. And it is, man. It's really hard to look inward. Like when I'm having bad days, it is the most difficult to look inward and say, what am I not doing? And not just say, well, F them. And this person sucks. And they're making mistakes. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. And they don't do it right. And that's why. It's like, yeah, maybe those things are true to some degree. But why are you mad about it? Mm -hmm. You know, what's making you upset? Mm -hmm. Because there's definitely periods in our life where we're able to kind of brush off, you know, the difficult stuff. That's so true. It, and there's days where we just we're just skipping through, whistling, <laughs> whistling, fucking Dixie, man. Like, like you know what I mean? And, and I do. Yeah, and and that's great. And we're just feeling like, you know, you're just feeling. You're like, I feel great. I look great. I'm killing it with the outfit. Yeah. Hair is good. Skin looks great. Those are great moments. Yeah. And what are we feeling? Those moments. We are feeling unconditional love for ourselves that's true and it is so hard for us to carry that to hold on to it to carry that and i i think that maybe it's because we've gotten to a place where we have all these new amenities like you said there was a time in our life where we just had to survive so we really couldn't think much about that you know if you only had one suit in the 1920s well you had one suit and you left the house you know like that's on day, yeah, yeah. On day four, maybe you were able to wash that, and you didn't leave the house at all that day right. until that suit was dry, you know. But you know, we get more comfortable. I think it gives us the more things we have that make other aspects of life easier. The more we forget how much work it takes. So when it comes to something like self love, self appreciation, and self worth, um. We forget that it doesn't come as easy as clicking an app on our phone. Yeah. And that's not our fault. It's it's just that we've we've been trained to think, you know, we've been trained to push a button and be like, I saw something or you talked about a book that I liked. I'm going to go to Amazon. Boom. Come to my house two days. Hell yeah, Amazon Prime. You know what I mean? Like instant gratification. Instant yeah. gratification. I know. Some people argue that the the core of wisdom is delayed gratification. Oh, yeah. I wonder if we'll be able to hear those fireworks on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's July 3rd fireworks. It is. They'll be on the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th. Yeah. <laughs> if you're wondering. It's, the, the delayed gratification thing is difficult to... And what's, what's, what's especially difficult about delayed gratification is the vast majority of people, in my experience, who've learned it have learned it from pain. You know, they've learned it from a difficult situation that they just need to get through. It's very hard to learn it when nothing's obviously wrong. You know what I mean? Like, if 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 you if you if you grow up overweight and you want to lose weight, you learn. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, but if you're a person who things are just kind of working well for, it's very hard to delay your own gratification. You, you can't see what it's doing to you. You you know what I mean? It's like if there's no if there's no like difficult thing that you feel and you can you can assign it to the fact that I need to stop giving myself exactly what I want all the time. Why stop doing it? It's hard to see, it's hard to for I think it, it becomes harder to see the value of delayed gratification mm. when like that's becoming harder and harder because it's not easy to point to a problem you know it's not why not order that book i mean why not what's the problem right the problem is when every time that you have a a want you give yourself the thing Mm -hmm. when something important happens or something important you really want you really need in life to do you will not have the skills to to be like okay I'm not going to get a lot of other things right now because I want that thing, mm, you know, yeah. it's, it, and yeah. it, it gets hard. Like you should learn that by the age of 18. I feel like, 
I feel like you should learn that by the age of 18, but do you anymore? I don't think you do. I, I think yeah. you might wait, might not be, not be till 30 even that like you learn the lesson of I should not give myself what I want. It's a hard thing to learn. Yeah, it's that's a, a I can speak heavily on that uh, me too. topic. Me too. It's hard uh, to learn that. And it's yeah. got in the way of a lot of things I actually did want. You know what? Do, have you experienced Many this where you've done you've figured out that and you start getting mad at other people don't? I've uh, had that. <laughs> I mean, I've had that problem where I'm like, I, I get resentful of people <laughs> because they don't delay their own gratification. <laughs> and I am. There's definitely been some times where I've felt that. Um, I try to come from more of a place of compassion hmm. these days. I, I definitely still struggle just like anybody else, but I do try to resound and realize that. You know, I have gone through some lessons and changes in my life that have uh, sort of made those lessons resonate a lot deeper. Um, and those are choices I made, and I realize not everybody has done that, hmm. um, nor will they do it, nor will they ever see it. And you you can only meet people where they've been, you know, You and you that's one thing you you have to understand is, you know, if someone wants to have that instant gratification, then, and they haven't done the work that you've done or opened your mind to the understanding, um, trying not to fault them. Um, but the, what I see a lot is, uh, people don't have a lot of patience. Hmm. Um, I find that so many people are so impatient, you know, and, um, I mean, I used to be that way too. Uh, a lot of things that I speak about too, I learned from direct experience. Mm -hmm. So doing the exact opposite of what I say now, mm -hmm. which I don't think I could talk about anything that I do now without having done the opposite, because that's just, that's one thing about my character that like, I don't like to talk about things I don't really know. Yeah. I wanted to say this to loop it right back is, uh. Do you think you could have done anything you've done without those bad things? I mean, because Ooh. because no, I don't think you could have. You you had to smoke too many bad cigarettes. Yeah, I sure did that. Uh, yeah, how would you have written a song about it had you not? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not I'm not suggesting no, somebody go out looking for trouble or go out specifically trying to do something bad. I'm saying like I think it's better. I think everybody has bad cigarettes. In their life. Oh, totally. And it's better to like to forgive yourself for it and see the value that came from that experience that like you grew from from is she is she bothering you? No, no. <laughs> she just she sat right down at my feet. She pushed me back a little bit. It's cute. <laughs> yeah, that's her. The uh but so yeah, I think I think that it, it ends up being for me personally, it ends up being better when I'm when I'm when I'm at peace with bad things that have happened to me or that yeah. I've done. Because that's like, I've I've realized it's part of what got me to the point where I realized that the problem. I, I don't think I ever would have realized those problems had had they not had I not engaged in them. You that's listen, that's uh that is so correct. I wanted to say something more profound than that word, but um you know, I I sought out crazy, wild, adventurous times and I can I can pinpoint direct times in my life where I had built something up, a few bands. I'd built a number of bands up to a point where they could have been a thing, and I went for the instant gratification instead. And it led to a lot of other things. Um, so, but having, you know... I I beat myself up over that for years, mm -hmm. for years. And that's, you have to come to a place of forgiveness with yourself because, you know, yeah, there's going to be people out there who um, maybe they didn't make those same choices, but that doesn't mean they don't have their own demons. Um. You have to you have to forgive yourself. You have to stop comparing. You have to embrace the journey you've been on 
for what it's taught you because there's been so many things that I've learned on my journey in my life so far. I've been able to live in a bunch of different places, play music in every place I ever lived, which is amazing. That's incredible. Um, even in a foreign country, I've played music in. What country? I was in uh, Kenya. Really? I was, yeah. Uh, back in 2007. Um, wow. Yeah. That's like that's 21 weird. years old, 22. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. Um, that's when the iPhone came out. Yeah, it was when the iPhone. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, I'm the, I same, didn't have one. I'm the I same age as you. So in 2007, oh, okay. oh, cool. Cool. I graduated from college. Oh, cool. I graduated the following uh, spring. You got to go to Kenya, though. <laughs> I did. I did. It was it was amazing. And that was, an, you know, that experience itself. Um, what led me there, you know, all, all the things. So what I say? I said forgiveness. Stop comparing yourself. Embrace the journey. You know, know what your distractions were. You know, I'm, I'm somebody who chooses not to drink alcohol or do hard drugs. You know, that's a choice I made after many years of drinking lots of alcohol and doing many hard drugs. I'm not saying anybody else has to do that. Nor am I saying you can't drink around me. I don't really want to be around people who are doing hard drugs these days. But by all means, drink, have a joint, whatever. That's cool, man. I don't care. Um, but that's the journey I came through. I realized that was a big thing for me Hmm. that was exacerbating other issues. So you understand, right? Understand those issues, those things about yourself and then embrace all of that and begin to let that form who you are. And you find this way to begin to learn how to love yourself Um, cause I think a lot of it is, is a running away, uh, Mm. a kind of running away from whatever it is you fear within yourself. I, I think a lot of us have our own personal fears and we create defense mechanisms. So I created a defense mechanism my first year of junior high cause I got bullied uh, I'm a straight male, but I got bullied for being gay. It's very weird because I've never, I've, I, not, you know, nothing against it. Uh, no, never, I, yeah. Never different cared. Too, yeah. Oh, totally different time. A much different time. Um, but that just happened to me, you know? So I created this defense mechanism, this persona, over the top, comedic, like, complete like over the top in every aspect Mm -hmm. you're gonna call me gay okay i'm gonna you know back then it was a little different to pretend you were gay um now you probably wouldn't want to do that but you know this comedic personality Mm -hmm. you introduce alcohol to that Mm -hmm. that amplifies it by like a hundred yeah so now you have this ultimate defense mechanism nobody can breach this And what I'm truly afraid of is, you know, whatever that fear was that hit me when I was getting bullied. Um, So, and once, and, you know, coming to an understanding of that journey within itself, how that shaped me to be the performer I am. Like that was my first performance, you know, was, wow, you're not going to be able to make fun of me. Wow. And let me show you why. Because Jesus. Your first performance was was a anti bullying <laughs> defense mechanism. In which you completely guarded yourself from who you are in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like just just cut off. You can't touch me now. Which is it's helpful in that moment, but it's a prison over time. It you totally. Yeah. yeah. Um my it's, connection. It's weird how that happens. Like you, you. I've said this before. Uh, you, you spend most of your adolescence trying on masks, you know, mm-hmm. and you identify as those masks, and then you hit a point where all the bullshit is like you can't hide, you can't, you can't deny that it's bullshit. You know, it's like this is all fucking bullshit. 
<laughs> Everything about me is bullshit. I am just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm not this mask. Yeah. You know, and the mask is uncomfortable and nobody knows who I am. And it's like, you, you can't, you can't hide for long from the fact that I just want to know, I want someone to know who I am. I want someone to see me as I am and be okay with it. And you can't do that if, yeah. you, if you're if you're wearing your mask. Oh man, you can't. You that is. Um. Yeah, yeah. You know, I. I had this mask. That I wore for a very long time. And. It, what, what I didn't do was connect to my emotional side. I was so afraid of every girl I dated thinking I was gay. Mm. I was so afraid of them thinking I was gay. Um, Man, and, that's and a mind fuck. It, you know, it would backfire so much. I mean, yeah. I would, I remember, I, you I have being this, afraid of it puts the thought out there. Yeah. It like yeah. it, it fake like totally. your fear is, is your fear of yourself is infectious. Yeah. People start to fear it in you. Oh god, that's so true. That's so I mean, I remember like the the girl probably started thinking, "Oh god, I don't want to hurt him, but I don't think he likes me." Yeah. No. Like I don't You're you're nailing it. And I remember waking up next to her in her bed, which is like awesome, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, awesome. <laughs> oh, you don't have a shirt on? I don't have a shirt on? Great. <laughs> but then thinking like she left the room and like the she was like, here, put something on the TV and thinking like I have to put on Sports Center. And it's like, uh, I got nothing against people who like sports. No, but you I'm weren't not doing a sports it. guy. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't get me wrong. I I I like a basketball game. I, I like it here and there, but I'm not like gotta watch the game tonight. And yeah. I'm here putting on Sports Center. Like you know, when really I want to put on like VH1. Yeah, we're, you know, it's funny like, how we do that shit. I mean, I think all be, people do that on a level. Yours is very specific and tragic in a way. But like that, just that, like they're all tragic. It's it's just I want you to like me so bad that I'm not gonna let you know who I am. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And it's like it's th- it backfires every time. It's like I can't. You can't keep up the charade for long. Eventually, the the veil comes down, and it's like, then you haven't given them the opportunity to meet you properly. You know, they've already got these ideas about who you are. Yeah, because you gave them those ideas totally that aren't real. That's yeah. not you. And and then you take it away from them. Of course, they're going to be upset with you. You can't yeah. steal that from them. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a, and you don't realize the extent of what you're doing at all. Um, that's why there's so much tension in families because in families. You can't avoid it. You see people change, and they're never. They're, you can't separate yeah. from it. You know. Yeah. My family was a little bit different, but I think I think my my parents came from a such an older generation. You know, my mom's an immigrant to this country. She came from Italy. <laughs> My dad was raised in, you know, he was raised during World War II in New York City in Brooklyn. His parents came from the Depression era, um, which a lot of my friends' parents aren't from that time, mm-hmm. you know, uh, especially a lot of my friends now, like their mm-hmm. parents are from a totally different time. So... My parents still had that, like, hide your emotions. Even, yeah, like, even my, and then you would see it come out, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's probably where I learned it from. I would, like, mask it, and then all of a sudden I would just, like, lose it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I would, if I was drinking 12 nights, you know, 12 days in a row, day number 12, that'd be the day I'd lose it. Yeah. You know, like, it was always, it always happened. There was always a meltdown. It's weird. Our parents... Uh, 
Our parents have a significant effect on us. And yeah, and that's not their fault. It's not. That's the thing. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing that's difficult about it. They just did it's like what their parents did. If you want to mature as a person, you have to come to the conclusion that your parents fucked you up somehow. <laughs> like, but not like not as a criticism of them. Yeah. But it's just like unavoidable. Yeah. Like they're human beings, not perfect, gonna make mistakes, mm -hmm. gonna have a profound effect on the child who's looking up to them. The cycle continues. You're not perfect either. If you have kids, same thing will happen. Totally. It, and it, it, it's not a, but it's like, you have to like have that moment where you see them honestly, and then you have to have that moment where you forgive them for it. And it's, it's, you forgive. It, it's, yeah. it sounds like really, that's an important part. Forgive it almost sounds bad, but like, you know what I mean? It, no, you do. Yeah. I mean, listen, it, it, and everybody's different. You know, a lot of people, if you've had, an abusive parent or a parent who left the other one, you know, there's, there's traumatic events that are very difficult. My mother is a survivor of a traumatic childhood with her father. Um, so she never forgave her father and, and that's, that's her decision. You know, that's mm -hmm. not my decision to make. I think if, if you want to have that in your heart and you want to reach full forgiveness, that's, that's a choice you can make. If you want to just choose how to learn the lessons of what not to do going forward, it's also a choice you can make, you know, but with all those choices, you have to find love within yourself and for yeah. yourself through all of it. Because Sometimes I wonder if that's why one of the reasons we're so concerned about kids, it's like it, what you're really upset about is like you, you showed them this too soon, you know, like they shouldn't have had to see you honestly yet. They weren't, mm. they weren't ready for this, you know, like you want, you want a little bit, you want, you don't want to like pretend because then, then the kid will feel like they're not supposed to ever feel anything. They're not supposed to have that. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is like when it goes over the line where it's like abusive, then it's like, I think the gutter, the guttural reaction is like, you've made it impossible for them to forgive you and it's going to be really hard for them to move forward when they can't forgive you, mm. you know? And that's like, that's the thing that gets me. That's the thing. It's like, it's like there, we're always going to have to forgive you for something, but you, what you did was so bad and it happened so early in their life and they had to see it before they were ready. You've, you've crippled them, you know? Oh like, man. I mean, you know, uh, I've had, I don't even want to use that language because it implies no, it, it implies that it's inevitable and it's not. It's just it's it's unfair. It's it's, an, it's unfair how m much more difficult. Well, it's it. it's a selfish act for the yeah. person who's committing it for sure. Um, you know, it, also this day and age, we're much more aware of is the person an addict? You know, do they do they have drug or alcohol issues? Do they have mental health issues? Um, but with all that being said, is uh, there's, I, I don't have children, so I can't speak on how to parent. All I can do is speak from what I've seen. And there's a vast difference. And from what you see when even, even let's well, start within America. When I was in college, I made a couple trips to work for Habitat for Humanity and Habitat for Humanity works within impoverished communities mm -hmm. to build homes for those who can't quite afford a regular house so it's a whole process and they, and you have to meet the criteria and and it's a good nonprofit you know um at least i think it's a good nonprofit um seems and good so going into those impoverished communities and you know speaking with people and meeting their kids and you you, you know depending on their background they behave differently. Hmm. You know, they, they have a different view of the world. And that was my first exposure to it. And then when I went to Kenya, which is a third world country, um, the kids that I met there, um, are, it, they, it's unbelievable how intelligent they are. Mm -hmm. And you see something different. You see how they've, and it's, and it's, it's not universal, you know, there's many different slums and everybody behaves differently within that, just like in the 
impoverished communities in America, there are the groups of people who, because they have this resistance, going back to the book, The War of Art, because they face this resistance for the majority of their lives, they have grown to a place of, I mean, it's, you know, you're meeting kids that are 18, 19, 20, and I was 21, 22, and I'm like, oh my gosh, man, I feel so stupid. Like, they yeah. know more about my country's politic than I know. Right. You know? And they're more intrigued about, like, they're chasing careers that actually make a it's global so difference. Yeah. You know, like, here, I want to, like, yeah. I want to be, like, on the stage at Madison Square Garden, and these guys are, like, studying how to, like, grow crops in, the, like, the African climate. And yeah, which one, is one of the things if you're trying to help a person is you don't steal their suffering from them. You know, like that's a gift as fucked up as that sounds. There's nothing I can do. Nothing anybody can do to undo what, no, is, you, what you has learn. happened. Yeah. And if I try to like protect you from it, I'm doing you a disservice, you know, because any amount of mm. moving forward is going to be you overcoming it. Yeah, you know, nothing, yeah. like I can be supportive of you. I can be supportive. I can be a hand to hold. I can be a shoulder to cry on. I can be a place to take a break. All fine. But I can't make that go away. And if I try to, I'm I'm harming you. I'm I'm like I'm just I'm just making it so that you'll never get over it. You'll never you'll never move past it. Yeah. You know? Like it, yeah, it, it's it enabling. Can, yeah, it can be the yeah. source of all your power. Like it can it can become the source of all like it can become the source of why you do things, you know, like I'm not going to do that or I'm, I'm not going to let that affect me. Uh, you know, like that's a powerful thing. Yeah. I think that's what you're describing with those people. Like, like they've had terrible things happen to them and it fueled them, you know, like fueled them to be better than. Yeah. You know, me who has like a regular life, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, it, you know, and then and that, and it can go either way, you yeah. know, and it, and it, um, it, that's just one example of, of my first time seeing how much happier all these, what we would call quote unquote, poor people mm -hmm. are, you know? Um, so let's loop this back around to, okay. to your music because right. you've talked a lot about these experiences you've had. The trauma you've experienced. I mean, you haven't been specific, and that's fine. I don't think you should. I don't wouldn't want to ask you to do that. But how important is that to your to your work? Uh, now it's something I think about a lot, and I'm not afraid to talk about it anymore. That's good. Um, but I was for a really long time. I get, I get that feeling. I get that feeling that like you've embraced vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. That was a thing that I had to do. Um, you know, I've been writing music for a long time and this is, I often, this is often a bit I say when I do my solo shows where, where I really have people's attention. Um, you know, when I started writing music, uh, one of the most popular bands in the world was Bush and you know, Bush was a great band. Uh, lyrics were kind of nonsensical. The 90s had a lot of nonsensical lyrics. Yeah. Um, not all of them, but some of them were just, you know, especially if you were into 90s rock. Uh, so all the songs, you know, when you first, well, it's not when you, when I first writing, started writing songs, I kind of copied all the songs that I liked. Mm -hmm. And um, the writing style. And then when I started discovering more singer-songwriters that I really liked, I was like, man, these the lyrics are so good. And I really wanted to write good lyrics. And But I, I would start to open up about myself, and I would feel weird. Imagine this 17, 18-year-old kid starting to open up writing on a page, but then feeling embarrassed for writing some sort of true emotion reflective of himself. Um, so then I would start to write these kind of like story songs, which, you know, uh, 
trying to think of a song that's an example of a story song. Um, and I'm blanking. But you know, Simon and Garfunkel have some. Oh, blood dee, oh, blood da. <laughs> Rocky Raccoon. Rocky Raccoon. That's right. a great one. Right. Yeah. That's a story song. Yeah. I, I love the Beatles. I don't really like that song. <laughs> um, really. Nor Oh, blood dee, oh, blood da. Um, You're not I, a fan of the story song. No, 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 no. It's not. I just. I used to be. Um, then I started getting more towards. Um, songwriters like Dylan, mm-hmm. Joni Mitchell. Um, he's not very favorable now in the public eye, and I I don't support him, but I have to say, you know, Ryan Adams. Yeah, was a huge influence on me. I I know he's not a good person. Um, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, but I heard that, a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Yeah, which you know, and that sucks. And it sucks that a lot of musicians that we all like were not good people. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them, and I'm not saying that forgives them. Um, I, I'm not really saying anything. I'm just it's a it's a realization that is hurtful and and shitty but they still all made good art Mm -hmm. um except there's a couple people that well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you know that's that's another topic but when i you know even even bowie Mm -hmm. like bowie you listen to Bowie, you're like man what is what is he i want to know what he's saying it's so cool and then lou reed the first Velvet Underground, the Velvet Underground and Nico was like, what? Are you, what? Oh my God. I'm waiting for my man. I'm right there with you, man. I'm in New York City. I didn't know what he was talking about at the time, but he's waiting to score some drugs. <laughs> but yeah, $25 in my hand. Like, like, I mean, shit, man. You know, like, so once I started getting to that stuff, I knew that I had to go deeper. Hmm. And... Um, then began that process, which is a a long, arduous process of writing song after song after song. And I started talking about what I was going through directly. And, you know, I would, I, I just dove into that and I was like, I'm going to write about everything. And I remember writing a song, a song that I play now. And I wrote it back in 2000 and I, I don't know when I started it, but I, I kind of finished it in maybe 2014. Um, and I remember writing it and finishing it and be like, okay, I'm never going to play this song for anybody. <laughs> like, this is my most vulnerable, most open song. And, and then, you know, recently bringing it back out and realizing how wonderful it was and, and playing it for people who were, were just so touched by it and, and so that's that's where I live now is I, I go mm-hmm. into that place of pure vulnerability. Um, and a big part of that is, you know, as a songwriter, um, at least for me, I, I, I enjoy meeting and talking to other people and, and carrying on conversations and really as much as it's fun to talk about myself. Sometimes I I don't want to do it all the time. I I really want to learn about other people, and I me too. I, yeah, and it's great because That's what I'm trying to. Do. You know what's great about it is it takes me out of you know my own head, which is the worst neighborhood mm-hmm. to be walking around in alone. Uh, it allows me to listen to somebody else. It opens up my heart. Um, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. And I'm not crazy, you know, uh, and in, in maybe a selfish way, it, it fuels the music because I'm able to understand another person's experience. Yeah. I don't think you can call it selfish though. And it, yeah, you know, it's not like I'm trying, it's not like I'm trying to get like experienced currency from people. You're, you're making music, which is for everybody with it. That's not selfish. And, and that's, and th- that's awesome. I'm glad that you, you took that. And that's definitely like, 
you know, I, I, I want to connect. I like to connect with people and, and, and I think we all like to connect. I hmm. think we all like to connect. We've said that before. We talked about the, our tribal connection. Um, yeah, the human tribe is the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how, what was, what was your question again? I don't even remember, man. <laughs> what, what, what can, what can I, what can we end this on? I think we can, we have to end this on, uh, turning trials and tribulations into a victory. I mean, that's hmm. seems to be what you've done. You've done. Oh, you, that's, thank you. I mean, you think about the song. Think about your single that's out right now. I mean, that, that song. You should hear the next single. <laughs> you want to say the name or no? Don't. No, we'll, we'll yeah, wait. Don't. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let that one happen. Um, well, hey, thank you for recognizing that. Uh, that's awesome that you see that. Um, and, and, you know, we've only, this is only our fourth or fifth time meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, you have to come back on too because at some point I got to talk about your guitars, which maybe. Jimmy Woodle mentioned flew the idea of having just guitarists on, like just have three people who play guitar. Oh, that'd be wild! On to talk about guitar. That would be. Oh, that for me that just sounds yeah. awesome. I want to do love... that, and then I want to do bass because yeah. I really want to do bass because bass players don't talk. Yeah, most... they, they get steamrolled. Like they're, 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 they're like, quiet. I'm just, I'm just a foundation, you know. Not, don't worry. So about me. essential though. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. The the a good bass player for me is like I really, I really, you have want to be a bass. I, oh yeah yeah no I do. Like I Dan really is like oh Dan's phenomenal. Insane. Dan and Josh Gordon and and uh, Ben they're all excellent. Um, I'm probably forgetting a couple other people. There's a lot of great musicians around here that I've I've played with and been fortunate fortunate and very lucky to play with. Um. Yeah, you know, I it is it's a daily practice, but I think learning that we can all rebuild from the ashes. I mean, I've burned a lot of bridges and burned them down to the point where I didn't think I had anything left and I've I've made it, you know, and I continue to make it and that just means, you know, like you know, I I, I haven't I've been very lucky in my life that like, you know, I never got in crazy trouble with the law. You know, I never got in like a a terrible fight. You know, I never got stabbed or shot. I've definitely been punched (laughs) and kicked and maybe body slammed to the floor of a bar before. (laughs) Um, You know, but I'm very lucky that uh, I've, I've made it this far in my life without some very heavy repercussions. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to remember sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, but even that, even that little kernel of like looking back at how crazy my life was from the age of, I mean, you know, I started partying when I was 15 years old you know, and then it just kept ramping up each year. Um, and now you don't drink. No, I don't drink. And now, yeah, now you don't drink. Like, yeah. That's a journey right there. That's like, yeah. that is a journey. That is like you, you, you started in a place and you completely transcended something. Yeah. 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 yeah that's great. It's, it's, it's very weird. It's still <laughs> weird to say. It's still so new. It's very weird to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that though. Yeah, and you know, like it, whatever that is to anybody out there, it's. Um, I'm sure the song means lots of different things to lots of different people. All of your songs, but specifically "Bad Cigarettes." I mean, yeah, so I have my own reading of it. I have my own understanding of it. Uh, your voice works really well. Thank you for that sort of appreciate it anguish. You know that sort of like. The soul of it, you know, like, oh, it's like, thank you. like, I don't mean it to like sound negative. I mean, like, it's a difficult thing. You know, it's a, it's a thing. It's very human. It's very like you. <laughs> there is an anguish in it. There is like, a, there is like a growing pains anguish in it. There's like this, like, sort of like, I'm not going to give up. 
I'm going to keep going. This is hard. You're an observant man, Jimmy. <laughs> you very much are. Were you in my brain when I was uh, singing in I the just studio? Try to, I just try my best to listen. And you did, and you're hear. listening very well. And I, that you make me very excited to release the next single. So when is that dropping? Ish. You don't have to be specific. So if I'm hopeful, you know... September, October. All right, so but I'm this, this I re- fall. I really want to do a music video for Bad Cigarettes. You should. Like Ariel, my friend Ariel, Girl Blue. I don't know why I looked at the camera there. Because like, uh, we all hope she's watching. You, I hope you are. <laughs> no, um, doesn't matter if she is um, or isn't. Yeah, she's um, another incredibly talented person. Amazing. And I remember speaking with her and... You know, I was like, my single's been out for a little bit, and I I, I want to put out a music video, but it's been out, you know, it's been out since February. And she was like, just put a video out. Yeah, who cares? Like, how long yeah, it's been out. like she just said it, like, like just do it. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. And I'm like, you're you'll, right. You'll reach a different audience. Yeah, that, you know, you're totally you, right. You'll re-reach and the existing like, audience. I'm not. I'm still a developing artist. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And then. It'll, it'll refresh it. Plus, I have this. Plus, it you'll get to see something visual. You you will. Pro- so I wonder if you work on that, will you have a good idea of when you think the next single will be out? Because it'd be a good time to be like, and look forward to and the next oh, single. Dude, you know, you're like, like you're you're you like reading <laughs> you're reading my notebooks, man. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I want to do. Like that's I think of everything as being a a, a lily pad to get to the next thing. Yeah. You know, and that's why, like, I haven't said I'm going to put out this single on this day. Yeah. Like, I think I know what song it is. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You probably do. And, and, and you played it, I think, last time I saw you. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely, I've been playing it. I um, think I know, which, by the way, go, go see Andrew. Ooh. Yeah. You know, I don't know when this will play? come out. Well, we're playing at the Troy Pig Out on July 13th, but that's oh, probably... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. It's going to be awesome. And then I have to book more shows for the band. Um, so... Your Instagram. You know, I'm going to link to all this stuff. Okay, like, Instagram is andrew.maraboli. That's my name. There'll be links in the description yeah. of this wherever you're listening or watching. Cool. And I have a Facebook, yeah. which is... it's. Kind of connected to my Instagram. Sometimes there's some other stuff on there, but it's, it's Instagram seems like a really good place to sort of put out content. It is, yeah. I'm still getting stuff. I'm getting better. I'm not the greatest, but I'm learning. Hmm. You know, I'm 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 like I had a lull, and it's all a process, man. You know, it's it's. Speaking of, before you go, you have to take a picture with that arm. Ooh. That's the thing I'm doing. Everybody takes a picture awesome. with that arm. Awesome. We should totally take a picture, yeah. too, speaking of that content. on my Instagram or the podcast. That's Instagram. perfect. I'd love to take a picture with an arm. I'm going to commit. By the time this is uploaded, this podcast will have its official name. That's yes. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have to end this podcast <laughs> so we can then do, we can figure out what we're going to call, <laughs> what you're going to call your podcast. All right, dude. Jimmy, thank you so much, man. This is great. great. Andrew Mirabile. Check him out on you know Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. Absolutely. All right, man. Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. That was fun, man. That was a pleasure, man. That was fun. We got into some some that we got way more into stuff than I thought. Yeah. We were gonna, man. That was great. Dude.